I got a new name, the What's Dyke Reaper. The Dyke, what the f***? <laughs> <laughs> man, come on, man. The, the Stud Dyke Reaper, Reaper, I don't know, something like that would be good, right? Hell no. Nah, we could do a man. merch collab, no? Huh? <laughs> yeah, we do need to reach no jump from merch cloud. We gotta oh. figure that out. You gotta have, come up with some raw shit, some raw designs and shit. He's coming for ninety percent. We, we can figure something out. What about how, how, what's the percentage of the whoops that you get? Because FYJ, oh, FYBJ yeah. man got got a new box of whoops with your face on it. That's not trying, my cousin. I need I need I need a hundred percent of that shit. I need the whole I need the whole percentage. Of the profits, because he's still gonna have to like pay for the box and the, the cereal itself and stuff. But what made you open to doing that cereal collab with him? Because you guys seem like at a certain point you actually really didn't Man, fuck I with him. Man, I ain't never do that shit with him. That's it. I ain't I ain't confirm that. Oh, he just did that without yeah. your permission? Hell no, I ain't confirmed that shit. Oh, he's funny as hell. Then that's amazing. You thought I confirmed that? I that you signed off on it? I yeah, I guess. You didn't. I, I man, mean. stop it, man. Oh. Oh, no, I ain't confirmed that shit. Wow. So, so you're doing you, fake collabs. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> that's amazing. So, hey, how did, all right, so when you found out he did have a box, did he find out through IG or he, like, hit you up and sends it to you? Or you no, just I seen it, like, on, on Instagram and shit. Like, I seen the box on Instagram. So how you feel about it? What if, what if it's somebody who actually did want to, like, partner up with you and him to do that? Would you actually, like, get into business with J-Main and actually produce the, the boxes? Oh, oh no, man. Oh, that's gonna be kind of hard. Like for me, me actually like, cause like, it's too much that went on. So it's like, oh no, man. That shit'd be hard. But what if J Main, cause it was proposed before that he should go to O Block with his hands out like this and just like present himself as like an offering, and then if they decide not to kill him, then he will be forgiven. Damn. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> I don't think he should do that. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he should do no, no shit like that. But do you think that he could be forgiven if he were to fully like apologize for every time he ever dissed and like if he if he were to issue an apology in which he really seemed like he regretted all that shit, do you think that people would be open minded to it? No, because it's like you gonna have still have some people that's gonna be like, F you know, mm. so that's gonna be like, it's still gonna be people who think how they want to think. Mm. And then you might have some people that be like, ah, oh, he cool. But you still have some people like, man, hell no, f*** that nigga. But does Tay f***ing with him make you feel a little bit more open-minded about possibly being cool with him? I mean, Tay, Tay do his own thing. So it's like, um, I don't really begin into shit like what people do. Like, So like, if bro f*** a nigga, like, he could f*** with him, go ahead. I, don't, I, ain't, I ain't finna fuck with him, though, you know? Mm. That's just how I rock, though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So say this is like you, you a nigga, that's your homie, you know? That ain't my homie. Yeah, that's it. But there's some people that you could potentially have so much aggression towards that even if Remo was cool with them, you might feel a type of way about it. It depends on who the person is. But not really us, yeah, because we're in the media, so you kind of expect us to have conversations yeah, with everybody. Yeah, with everybody, yeah. Anybody, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I don't really be tripping off that shit, like, especially with the people who do the media, run the medias and shit. Like, yeah, that's y'all job. That's what y'all yeah. do, so... Oh man, I don't be really. At first, I used to be like, man, I had to really figure that shit out. I'm like, man, you can't be tripping off them people. That's what they do. That's their job, to talk to as many as people as they can. I used to be tripping off that shit back then, like ten years ago, twelve years ago. I used to be like, man, I ain't never coming no no jumper. I ain't never doing um Vlad. I ain't never doing none of that shit. I had to realize, like, man, you can't be like that. What was the problem? All right, because I do remember the Vlad situation. Why did you say that you was going to never do a Vlad? I think you tried to charge him a million or something. No, I was just playing when I said that. Um, Just, like, really trolling. But I don't know. That's just how I was feeling back then. Like, I had to really. But it had to be something for you to like, feel that way. Like, he was supposed to. No, was I just say, ops or something? Yeah, little shit like that. He used to be saying my name instead of saying my name on interviews right. and shit. Because so. Vlad and I are kind of the same way where it's like if we get an interview with some. Like, if we can't get an interview with Lil Reese, mm -hmm. we're going to interview people that don't get along with Lil Reese. We're mm -hmm. going to interview Lil Reese's friends. That's and we're going to ask questions about Lil Reese. And obviously, from your perspective, you might feel a certain type of way about that, especially when the conversation can concern real deal trauma that you've been through, people that you lost, that you're mm -hmm. still up about etc so i could i can understand why there might be that feeling but like now the norm for rappers is basically like they start their career doing interviews and then they just keep doing interviews whereas i feel like you guys came in the game and it was like you, you didn't do a lot of interviews and i feel like it helped you guys that it was a little bit mysterious mm -hmm. yeah hell yeah because like I, this the most time i ever did interviews like when i just got out of jail 
like a year, like a year and a half ago. I did like probably since I've been home, I've been probably like five, six interviews. But that's the most I ever did. Like I don't never really did interviews. Yeah. So what made you start opening up more and like, all right, I'm I'm, I'm gonna start speaking and giving people more of myself and opening. Cause I've been going through some shit, so it's like, why not? Do a few interviews and let them know like what's going on, but not too much. You can't let them know too much, but you can let them know some little shit. Yeah, mm. yeah. Cause like I would understand you not want to do interviews if you felt like you actually had to answer all the craziest questions. But obviously, like we'll ask you a question about something that you don't necessarily want to talk about, and I feel like at a certain point you realize like, oh, I don't have to spill my guts and like literally answer the question you can say this shit about having to do your research and you know be able to kind of move on to the next question if you're not comfortable with it oh gang hell yeah you just gotta know how to maneuver through them interviews and shit like talk to them bitches certain people don't know how to do that though mm. certain motherfuckers get on the interviews and get the tweaking I ain't gonna lie saying too much doing too much you feel like a lot of Chicago people are saying too much or doing too much in these interviews nowadays yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. That's that's what go on though. Like that's what go on in the real with these people. Yeah, like, there, on, there was a. Motherfuckers don't know how to really do interviews.